Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Monday, October 27th, the, re the regular business meeting for the Elementary Office School District. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one more nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. about 
making a positive impact on our students. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hofer, who will talk a little bit about the mentoring program. Thanks, Mr. Burns. Uh, Dr. Christian, you might remember we had a couple of snow days last year. And uh, Dr. Soder, you might remember that that created some flex time for us to do some work on our own. So uh, in that flex time, uh, Mr. Garaflo and I and a bunch of other teachers really started to look at what was best practice for middle schools. And three or four things repeatedly kept coming up. And one of those things was mentoring. Um, if you want to know the other three, it's mpoker at ojr.com. <laughs> mentoring students by adults is just a really positive experience. And the um, statistics speak for themselves. The first one just says that teachers are really good mentors, people in helping professions. Secondly, mentoring is really effective in keeping students in school. Um, thirdly, it raises the self-esteem of students, students gives them confidence. And then lastly, it decreases at-risk behaviors like drug and alcohol use a great deal. So we thought, here we are now. We have this program that has some issues. We know that mentoring is best practice in the middle school. And so is there a way that we can combine them effectively to get that program in place? So we changed the community meeting format. As Mr. Burns said, the first thing we did was May 7th and 8th graders. The research on peer mentoring isn't quite as strong, but we wanted the idea that these students were all in it together. So that was the thought process. Secondly, we wanted to get all staff involved. The original plan was actually even to use paraprofessionals as mentors, but because of logistical reasons, we couldn't. So all professional staff now have a mentoring group. We cut, with those numbers, we cut the, the group numbers in half, essentially. So now instead of having 24, 28, we are down to groups of 12, 14 is our biggest group. We made it so that this group only does one thing, and the thing that they do is mentoring. There's no outdoor activity, kickball, study. We just do the mentoring program during this dedicated group. So it makes it very specialized and unique in that way. As Mr. Brown said, we move the time to the morning. The students are more engaged, they're more alert, they're ready to go and have better conversations that way. We set it up so that students move with their mentor for two years. So the seventh graders that are in my mentoring group now will be in my group next year. So we have that long-term kind of connection, immediately give seventh graders an adult that they can be with, um, trust throughout the next couple of years of their school. Um, and we, to kind of mesh into the community day, we're using now community day meeting type activities for all students. So students who did have the opportunity in the past now have that opportunity to join in to the challenge day type activities. And so we had all this stuff in place and then we were thinking about how we could format it so that it was consistent and the same. And I happened to be taking a class and I saw this Jane Nelson's um, positive or responsive classroom uh, model and it worked out really well. It's um, a four step model. You start with a greeting and then you do a sharing type activity. Then there's a group activity which would typically be one of the community day type, very positive, not focused on the what you can do, but more focused on the what you should do, what you can do. Um, and then lastly, the message of the day. So we run one now and it seemed to work pretty well. Um, and as we did that, we started to think about maybe some changes in challenge day as well. Thank you, Mr. Hofer. Um, challenge day is a pretty intensive team building type day. Um, we brought the program in four or five years ago. And the idea was 
have activities that really broke down stereotypes and help kids get to know each other on a different level. And it was a single day activity. Um, we had about 120 kids a year. Some years were a few less or a few more. And kids brought in permission slips in order to participate. We also recommended um, some kids that we really wanted to participate encourage them to get in their permission slips. But it was limited to 120 kids. That was really what we could facilitate with the type of program that it was, which is about 20% of our student population. The program was also facilitated by staff volunteers, teachers who wanted to be part of the day. Um, the day itself, and I was involved from, from day one, uh, Mrs. Morgan, um, Mr. McCormick at the high school and I got together. We planned the first year, and it, it was a success. It was a big success in my mind. A lot of the kids got a lot out of it. The problem was, it was a success for the kids who participated in it. And the idea was that they, they would take what they learned, carry it back into the building. And unfortunately, we found out that that wasn't quite happening uh, the way that we anticipated. So Mr. Stolfus is going to talk a little bit about that. Thank you, Mr. Gravelo. Uh, so the numbers support that you know we had to kind of look at how to change it. We saw that the challenge day was very beneficial. Uh, for the students who were involved in the activity. As Mr. Dee said, that was about 120 eighth grade students that participated in that. So the majority of our building, of our population, uh, was not involved in Challenge Day. The hope, of course, was that the students who were involved would somehow take that back and share and build, and thereby, like a domino effect, uh, things would start building on one another. Uh, we surveyed at the end of the year, and some of the results of the survey you can see here at the end of the eighth grade year, <clears throat> those who participated and all others in eighth grade were, were surveyed uh, on a few different things, challenge they include, but also a community meeting. Uh, close to half of our eighth grade student body last year indicated that uh, community meeting, um, they, they weren't really getting the connection we were hoping they would get. Uh, and that was what we believe was for a multitude of reasons. Uh, it would be the fact that at the end of the day, they were with their homeroom teacher yet again. The group was large. The message that was delivered in a lot of those community meetings was very, um, again, as Mr. Hofer said, what you shouldn't do, the kind of negative type of message rather than building them up and, and building on positives. Oops, sorry. Too far. Um, as far as challenge day was concerned, uh, again, those who participated saw it as a very positive experience. Um, but the majority of our population really saw no benefit from that. They heard about it. They heard from those who participated. It was fun, it was neat, they learned a lot, and they grew, and, and that was fantastic, but they didn't get the immediate impact from that. And 32% of the eighth grade uh, reported that outsourced presentations and assemblies did not really affect their action uh, or their behavior on a daily basis in middle school. So really what we wanted to do was find a way to bring the activities from Challenge Day, uh, the things that if you were ever in there, you saw kids from all kinds of backgrounds who wouldn't normally associate with one another coming together, um, getting closer with one another, learning about one another, and we wanted to take that and really get it so it would touch on every student or as many students as possible uh, in the building. And that's why with reorganizing the community meetings and delivering some of the Challenge Day activities through community meeting, uh, we did not only all of eighth grade and seventh grade as well. Okay. Um, the new challenge did format, and I'm back to Mr. D. Thank you. Um, yeah, so one of the things that we decided to do was take a look at how we were doing challenge day and try to kind of bring that together with our mentor groups. And we found out that we already had groups ready to go with our mentor groups. We had small groups, we had mixed grade levels with the mentor that these kids already knew. And one of the challenges of Challenge Day was getting the kids to kind of open up with a group of people they weren't familiar at all with. So with the mentor groups, we have a group of kids who have already met each other a couple of times, already met their mentors, and so we're hoping that that's going to help them open up a little bit. Um, we decided that we were going to have every student in the school would participate, and every staff member was going to participate. So this was truly going to be a school-wide program. Um, the thing that I think I'm most excited about is that we can now carry some of those activities on at a later date. We can come back to some of the activities that we do. We refer back to them once it worked well. We can come
come back to and kind of talk about and kind of break down what went on and really kind of carry these activities throughout the year. Because the old way we did it, when Challenge Day ended, it really kind of ended. And in this new format, we're going to be able to carry these activities to discuss them and hopefully have some carryover throughout the school year. And actually, uh, I think Corbin's going to talk for a second about some of the other ideas. And once we got these deals permitted, there were a couple of other things that came up that we're going to put a work with. Yeah, so one of the uh, things we're, that's kind of running parallel to the change in community meetings and, and uh, spreading challenge day out throughout the year is a larger picture, a larger goal of the building that we have, which is a positive behavioral support plan. Um, I went to a conference uh, last spring in Hershey, uh, the PBIS Implementers Forum, and it was all about um, schools throughout the state, high school, middle school, elementary schools included, uh, they were implementing various strategies and interventions which focused on uh, kind of a positive reward system, recognizing positive behaviors, acknowledging positive behaviors, and rewarding that. And reward not always have to, does not always have to be something physical. It could be a mention on uh, announcements somewhere, uh, a postcard sent home to acknowledge positive behavior. We're really trying to focus on what are the good things that the students are doing, and when they do them, shining a light on that. Um, there are some schools around us that have implemented at a middle school. Uh, we visited Phoenixville probably three weeks ago. Uh, Mr. Garoppolo and uh, about four of the teachers and myself went to Phoenixville Middle School. They've had the program in place now for uh, a few years. And um, they're probably a little bit ahead of what we hope to accomplish this year, but somewhere that we're kind of hoping to get to. Uh, the goal for us will be, I think, fall of next year to really have this thing set up. But, uh, they offer each month a positive, they tie in with their OBS program as well, and they tie in some kind of positive reward uh, with that. A student who submits a, uh, or brings to the attention of their discipline team some bullying that they've seen, someone who stands up for a friend. Uh, they have a theme each year, I think this year their theme was heroes. You know, being a hero for someone, they refer to it as uh, not, getting some, not getting someone in trouble, but getting someone out of trouble if you see it happening. Uh, so they identify students uh, that stand up for one another, that are positive for one another, and they reward them. They'll go each month, uh, either in-house or out. This month they're going to go towards the corn maze. They take um, about 10 to 12 students per grade, and they'll go off-site and reward those students. They'll recognize them. This is all. This is a surprise at Phoenixville, and by the way, this will stay. We'll all sign away for it. This is a surprise for our students as well. We're planning, so don't talk about this with students. If you have, if you have middle school students. Our goal is to do one more market period, not one month right now. Um, we'd like to um, identify, again, about 10 to 12 students per grade. And our first one, I think, will be an in-house, but it could be a dinner where we give them lunch, pizza lunch, uh, movies, popcorn in the auditorium, reward those, acknowledge them, and recognize them in front of the building. Um, the reason it's a surprise, we think that it's kind of good to go in the in the morning. They'll come in and think they have their regular school day ahead of them. We'll pop all the announcements, kind of interrupt the regularly scheduled program and say, these students have earned the reward today, here's why. Here's what they've done to earn that reward. Call them down to the auditorium, tell them their usual day is going to be replaced with a fun day. Not their normal day is not fun, but certainly probably not as much fun as eating a pizza and watching a movie uh, for the day. So, or for at least part of the day. So, that's where we are right now, is really trying to find ways uh, to implement this positive behavioral support. Um, I've been listening to the help of a gentleman named Charlie Roby, someone who's living in the room with Charlie Roby, who works at the CCIU, and he's helped many schools institute positive behavioral support. So the ball is rolling on that, and we think it married very nicely to new challenge day format, new community day format, and really getting the overall culture very positive in middle school. I've already had some students that I've had to see for discipline issues 
and we've talked with them about who's their mentor, and I've spoken to their mentor uh, and about behavior that we've seen so they can have conversations between themselves as well. So there's a real possibility for a strong connection there, especially for seventh graders now who are going to go to their mentor this year and next to really have a positive connection. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Thank you, gentlemen. Item 4.2, Student Government Executive Council President's Report, Zach Servant. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Um, first, I'm going to start with the high school. The Gay Straight Alliance celebrated Ally Week to promote unity, friendship, and support of LGBTQ students. An ally is someone who believes school should be a safe, supportive place for all students, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity expression. Over 100 students faculty and staff pledged to be allies. The Wildcat Ambassadors were volunteer ushers at the OGR Band Cavalcade on October 4th. On Saturday, October 11th, the Student Council assisted Ms. Barbara Green in organizing a Pretty in Pink breast cancer fundraiser. The keynote speaker for the evening was Ms. Louie Khan from NBC10 News. NJR2C members served as ushers and members of the OJR High School Orchestra, led by Mr. Martin Prescott, treated everyone to beautiful music during the dinner. Student Council recently worked on beautifying the area around the Wildcat in front of the high school. Trees were painted over the weekend, and benches are expected to be in grade soon. 21 members of Student Council attended State Senator Rafferty's Student Leadership Program on Thursday, October 23rd at Montgomery County Community College's West Campus. Students had an in-depth look at the legislative process by participating in mock committee and full Senate meetings where they discussed proposed legislation. For the past two weeks, Key Club has been organizing a food collection for the North Country Food Pantry as part of Make a Difference Day. Now on to the middle school. The dance committee comprised of several seventh and eighth graders did an outstanding job of hosting their first dance with the PTA on October 10th which over 500 students attended. Auditions for the middle school production of Annie began last week. OJR Middle School participated in Make a Difference Day activities where students collected food items and money to benefit the North Coventry Food Pantry. Now on to East Coventry. All students at East Coventry had the pleasure of experiencing expedition cooking with, dish, with the district chef last week. The students enjoyed hot apples prepared right in front of them. Even better, they enjoyed sampling them. On Monday, November 3rd, grade 6 students will be participating in a day-long event called Unity Day. Facilitators from Tom, Stecker, and associates along with several staff members will be creating team-building activities, diversity awareness opportunities, as well as discussion around what it means to be a responsible user of technology. This event is always well received by the students and is followed up in the classrooms for the weekly classroom meetings. Now on to French Creek. French Creek fourth graders in Mrs. D. Batista's class have adopted Samson, the tail wagging tutor as their dog with a blog. Students enjoy writing to Samson about science, literature, research, and much more. Having Samson help out with the blog has been a fun way to get the students even more excited about their writing. The students also welcomed over 550, 550 special guests this past Friday for Grand Friends Day. It was a wonderful day for all the students and their families. Now on to North Coventry. The North Coventry sixth grade students, along with their teachers and guidance counselor, Mrs. Grasshoff, visited the Technical College High School in Phoenixville to learn more about potential careers in criminal justice, engineering, allied health, graphic design, electronics, culinary arts, cosmetology, carpentry, and automotive. Students explored three different careers based on individual interests. And finally, West Hudson. The students welcomed over 500 special guests last week for Grand Friends Day. It was a wonderful day for everyone. The third and fourth grade autistic support social skills class have been accumulating acts of kindness within the school, like talking to someone new, complimenting someone, giving up a space in line, cleaning up to someone, and holding doors open. These acts of kindness are reported on our daily announcements. This concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, yeah. Student participation for the Pennsylvania School Boards Association annual conference. How did they do? Yeah. They got a dirty trick pulled on them. Zach wasn't able to make his in-person appearance at the proper time. I was 
saying, he's got a twin brother, and these people would never know. <laughs> Back at work out here, well, what would you have done? You got applause for your presentation, everyone liked it, and I made sure everybody really loved the details. So they were good. Thank you, Dr. Christian, for running the uh, express service down to the Canadian Trail. It's a good problem to have when you have students that are talented in many areas like Matt and Zach, and they were enthusiastic participants in the mock school board meeting too. Um, Just like those that we thoroughly analyzed on the trip back from Hershey. Thanks. Uh, for our next item, item 4.3, student recognition, Dr. Marquini, if you would come forward to assist. We have several students that we'd like to recognize this evening. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships that began in 1955. High school students enter the National Merit Program by taking the preliminary SAT, National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, a test which serves as an initial screening of approximately 1.5 million entrants each year and by meeting, uh, meeting published program entry participation requirements. We'd like to congratulate the, congratulate the following students and their families for their excellence in this, uh, in this uh, arena, pardon me. Congratulations to the following students who have received letters of commendation in recognition of their outstanding academic promise. Would the following students please come forward? Alexander Bendick, Mackenzie Briglia, John Dyer, Christopher Gardner, and Nathan Smith. Would the following students come forward who have been recognized as National Merit Semifinals? Congratulations, Ahmed Farhan, Ethan Gelting, Patrick Shaw. Please join me in congratulating these fine students. Unfortunately, due to the 
scheduling change in the district soccer playoffs. Um, Zach was unable to stay at the PSBA, but the high school video production students and Zach put together a wonderful speech which just shows that the whole community at the PSBA and received very well. As a reminder to the district, Tuesday, November 4th is a professional development day for our faculty and there will be no school for students. The Friends of the Arts will celebrate their 40th anniversary on Sunday, November 9th at the Sprague Hollow Country uh, Golf Club. And the Education Foundation Community Celebration will be held Saturday, November 15th at the French Creek Golf Club. Additional information for both of these events can be found on the district website. Our annual Veterans Day Assembly and Celebration will be held on November 11th at the high school. Additional information is also on the district's webpage. The 2015-16 school calendar will be reviewed at the November Committee of the Whole. Please note, because Labor Day is September 7th, and based on our current regulation uh, 805.3, uh, the regulation calls that school will start before Labor Day. So we will get our calendar ready for the board to review and open for the community uh, to see as well. Uh, but Labor Day is very late last year. Next year, last year. Next year. Finally, thank you in advance to the Roberts Education Association for hosting the second annual Safe Trick or Treat Night at the L.J. Roberts High School this Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, it was a wonderful community event last, night, last year I'm sure it will be this year. Families who attend are requested to bring canned food items in exchange for participating in the fun festivities, and all of those canned food items will benefit the North Coventry Food Pantry. I think last year, Mr. Rod, we had over a thousand students attend. About 811 people. We are going for a thousand this year. It will, it will be outstanding, so thank you for doing that. That's all I have, Mr. Friesen. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Moving on to item five, 5.1, public comment. Information, proposals, and statements from individuals or delegations pertaining to items on the agenda. Speakers are to indicate your name, township or residence, and the item or items on the agenda to which your comments are addressed. Speakers will be limited to no more than three minutes. Moving on to item 6.1, the committee, of the, the committee reports. <clears throat> there was a committee of the whole meeting, um, and that was held on October 13th at 6 p.m. at the North Coventry Elementary School. At that time, the following committees did meet, curriculum and instruction, along with the Finance Committee. Moving on to item 6.2, Buildings and Grounds Committee. Mr. Kleinfelter. Thank you, Mr. Priest. The Buildings and Grounds Committee met on Wednesday, October 8, 2014, at 7 p.m. in the administration boardroom. We received an update from Emma Architects on options for the renovation of the East Coventry and East Benson facilities. We also reviewed the potential new project timelines along with the options. The committee reviewed the landscaping design plan that was put together by the high school student government. Um, I can see that the work has been completed. I congratulate and thank you for all your hard work um, in making the campus um, look more presentable. The next Buildings and Ground Committee meeting is scheduled for Monday, January 5th, 2015 at 6 p.m. in the Administration Building Boardroom. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Kleinfelter. Moving on to the Chester County Immediate Unit. Mrs. Marcus. The Chester County Intermediate Unit Board of Directors held its monthly meeting on October 15, 2014 at the Child and Career Development Center in Grosville. The following items were discussed. Prior to the ID Board meeting, a rededication ceremony was held in the Child and Career Service Development Center. The ceremony celebrated the lifetime commitments of three very individuals who have greatly enhanced the lives of children through their leadership and dedicated service. John D. Bailey, former CCIU Executive Director, Catherine A. Pettis, former CCIU Board. 
short anti substitutes and the private private companies do not. So it's not worth it to the IU anymore to provide that service for costs that are in the long run. So um, I'm sure we're thinking about that. I know you mentioned it before back to Christian. So if we could get an update on our plans moving forward as a district, um, I would love it. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Vargas. Moving on to 6.4, Curriculum and Instructional Committee, Mrs. Vargas. The Curriculum and Instructional Committee met as part of the committee of only on October 13th. There was one presentation for this meeting. The administrative team provided information about the assessment results in the 2013-14 school year. This included data summaries for advanced placement tests, SAT, PSTEM examinations, and PSSAs for achievement and growth. Data was presented for district grade levels and for each school. The principals highlighted mathematics, reading, writing, and science data for each school, and the school performance profile, school profile scores were shared for each school, and the components for the index were also reviewed. The school community is able to review the data on the district website, and we will meet again as a committee at the next um, committee of the whole on November 10th. Thank you, Mrs. Marcus. Moving on to the Finance Committee, Mr. Stone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Priest. I have two Finance Committee updates to share this evening. Uh, first, uh, Mrs. Carmine presented the 2015-16 budget calendar at the October 13th Committee of the Whole Meeting. Uh, the budget calendar includes uh, key dates for public budget discussions and presentations, as well as our school district's filing deadlines with PPE. And uh, that uh, schedule and calendar can be posted on the school district's website. Uh, secondly, on Friday, October 17th, Mr. Fries and I met with Irvine and Company, our local auditors, to review the district's financial statements and audit results for the year ended June 30th, 2014. Dr. Christian, Mrs. Scrumine, and other members of the business office staff also attended the meeting. This wrap-up uh, wrap meeting is a normal and routine step at the conclusion of the annual financial review. I'm happy to report that the district received favorable audit opinions on both the uh, financial and compliance uh, audits. The auditors uh, described their opinion as unmodified and clean, and in the accounting world, that's a major compliment. Uh, they described it as their highest level opinion. Both of the financial statements, as well as the auditor's year and closing of accounts are included in this evening's board meeting agenda. Additionally, uh, her vice management letter was included in our board line uh, for board members prior to the That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Legislative and Policy Committee, Mr. Hughes. Very much. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Personnel Committee, Mr. O'Neill. No report. Thank you, Mr. Rogoff. Item seven, these are consent items, 7.2 through 7.5, do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Kleinfelter. Second. Second by Mr. Rogoff. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item number eight, eight point one, approval of minute meeting minutes. Excuse me. Go ahead. So moved by Mr. Lacoff. Second by Mr. Hughes. Do have any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Item number nine, board communication. Is there any board communication at this time? Mr. President, I have not received any board communication this month. Thank, Thank you, Mrs. Carmine. Item 10, board discussion. I, I just had one thing, it's not really a discussion item, but I did want to say uh, looking forward to the trick or treat event that's happening this week, and also that the um, I don't know why when we have our cavalcade of fans, it's always so cold. <laughs> it's always cold. Um, it was 
a wonderful evening. Uh, instructors, the students, uh, all the people that helped out with that event. It was a wonderful event to uh, attend for our community. And we had some positive remarks about that. So I wanted to pass that on to the rest of the board. Item 11, old business. Seeing that there is none, moving to item number 12. These are also consent items 12.2 through 12.13. Do I have a motion? Moved by Mr. Food. Sorry. Second by Mr. McCall. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13, new business. 13.1, approval to amend policies. Moved by Mr. O'Coff. Second by Mr. Hughes. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.2, approval of memorandum of understanding with Team Search Local number 384. Moved by Mr. O'Coff. Second by Mr. Hughes. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.3, approval of confidential in lieu of FAPE agreement. Do I have a motion? Moved by Mr. Vargas. Second. Second by Mr. Kleinfelter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.4, ratification of homebound instruction. So moved. moved by Mr. Stone. Second. Second by Mr. O'Connor. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.5, approval to establish a student activity account. So moved. moved by Mr. Kleinfelter. Second by Mr. Stone. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.6, approval of student activity clubs and organizations. <coughs> Moved by Mr. McCall. Second. Second by Mr. Kleinfelter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.7, approval of out-of-state overnight student trips. Moved by Mr. Stone. Second. Okay. Second by Mrs. Vargas. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.8, approval of conference attendance. Second. Moved by Mr. Kleinfelter. Second by Mr. Stone. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.9, approval of award of bid. So moved by Mr. Kleinfelter. Second by Mr. O'Connell. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.10, approval for architectural firm for the East Coventry, East Vincent facility improvement projects. Moved by Mrs. Boo. Second by Mrs. DeLulu. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.11, approval of transfer of accounts. Moved by Mr. O'Connor. Second by Mrs. Boo. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.12, approval of stipulation agreements for real estate tax appeals. So moved. moved by Mr. Stone. Second. Second by Mr. Kleinfelter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13.13, ratification of professional services and or maintenance agreement. So moved. Moved by Mr. McCall. 
Second by Mr. Hughes. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 14, public comment, information, proposal statements, and or questions from individuals or delegations pertaining to any item. Speakers are to indicate their name and township of residence. Speakers will be limited to no more than three minutes. Moving on to item 15, board request for information. Moving on to item 16, adjournment. So moved. moved by Mr. Lukoff. Second by Mrs. Booth. Thank you all. This meeting is now adjourned.